Good morning. Welcome to our service. This will be our recorded version of the Hanamatsuri service for April 9th of 2023. And I'm going to go to the other side of the Naijin, chant Shi Shinrai, which is welcoming the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha and affirming our relationship, our relying upon the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. When I'm up here, I'll lose the mask. And uh, I will do the Shi Shinrai by myself and then move right into Jusei Ge, which I hope you will help me with the chanting of. Shishin K E E Today, on this occasion of the year 2023 Hanumatsuri service, the members of the Pasadena Buddhist Temple, our friends and our visitors, are reaffirming our reliance on the three treasures of the truth. We just did this in Chinese, let's do it in English. We rely upon the Buddha, we rely upon the Dharma, we rely upon the Sangha. Namada Butsu, Namida Butsu, Namanda Butsu, Namanda Butsu, Namada Butsu. And now if you would please join me in the chanting of Ju Sege. Busatsu Daimurio Jukyo Ju Sege Gagon Tyo Segan Hishimu Dyodo Shigan Humandoku Sehu Jo Shogak Ga o mu ryo ko Pu yi dai te shu Pu tai sho bingu Se hu jo sho gak Ga shi jo butundo Myo sho cho jipo Pu kyo mi sho monna Se hu jo sho gak Ri yoku jin sho nen Joe Shu Bongyo Shigumu Jodo Isho Tenin Shi Jinariki and Daiko Usho Mu Taido Shojo San Kumyo Kosai Shu Yakunan Kaihi Chi Egen Neshi Kon Moan Te sokusho akudo Tudatnen shuman Koso jo mandoku Iolo jipo Nichigatn shu juki Tenko onhugen Ishu kai hodo Kose ku doku ho Jo o dai shu chu Seppo shi shiku Kuyo isaya button Kusoku shu tokuhon 
So forgive us for uh, proceeding without an organist today, but uh, we're, uh, Alan Goto and I are preparing this uh, for Hanamatsuri for those who cannot come to the temple as we won't have the capacity to broadcast that day. So you don't need to stand in this case, but if you would join me for the singing of the guitar, Hotoke, uh, excuse me, in Lumbini's garden, in Lumbini's garden, Alan will put it on the screen for you. If you're using the service book, it's 117. And I'll start on a count of three, one, two. Softly blew the breezes on that glorious morn in Lumbini's garden where Siddhartha was born. From the earth sprang flowers, birds in warbles sang. Through the earth and heavens, strains of music rang. Gods and men and angels all for worship came. Glory to Siddhartha, glory to his name. We will now have the uh, devotional reading. I'm going to ask you to join me for the uh, Jodo Shinshu Life Principles. Shin Buddhist Life Principles. Uh, Seikatsu Shinjo in Japanese. The Shin Buddhist Life Principles on uh, page nine, again, if you're using the book, and Alan Goto will get it on the screen for you at home. Shin Buddhist Life Principles. And trusting in the vow of the Buddha, Calling out the Buddha's name, I will pass through the journey of life with strength and joy. Revering the light of the Buddha, reflecting upon my imperfect self, I will strive to live a life of gratitude. Following the teachings of the Buddha, discerning the right path, I will share the true Dharma with all. Rejoicing in the compassion of the Buddha, Respecting and aiding all sentient beings, I will work towards the welfare of society and the world. Namo Amida Butsu, 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 Namo Amida Butsu,
Well, good morning again. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the Dharma message portion of the service, again, uh, commemorating Hanamatsuri, the year 2023. Hanamatsuri uh, literally means flower festival, uh, but this is the commemoration of the birth of Gautama Siddhartha Shakyamuni Buddha, our historical founder. We're recording this service for the 9th of April, 2023, but anytime you watch it, we appreciate your having tuned in. The Buddha's birth was traditionally dated as 615 before the Common Era. He was born in India's small, but then wealthy kingdom of Magadha. This is currently part of Nepal. Born as regent elect, elected by an oligarchy, a clan. It was a democratic election, only, only a certain number of wealthy people were involved in the election, and he was selected as prince, crown prince. Again, this was in Magadha, uh, current day Nepal, and it was in a, a place which came to be called Lumbini's Garden, which is how we, why we came to sing that song, in Lumbini's Garden. And actually, it wasn't called Lumbini's Garden when he was there, but it was named that after he became famous, and Lumbini was his grandmother's name. So it was named after the Buddha's grandmother after the fact. Shakyamuni's birth is important because of his subsequent awakening and his 45 years of teaching us, teaching everyone this path to awakening. There's the mythical uh, story that the Buddha immediately after book birth took seven steps and pointed up, pointed up and down and said, above the earth in the heavens and below here on the earth, I alone am the world honored one, the Buddha, the awoken one, the one who knows truly and expresses the oneness of all life. So that's, he didn't mean himself individually and for 2,500 years and the 200 or so surviving schools of Buddhism and the probably 200 that have morphed into the living ones, no one has ever suggested he meant himself. I alone in the world honored one means a person who has awoken, a person who sees the truth of this life. Awoken persons alone deserve the honor of all and are world honored. A person who has awoken to the deep oneness of all is uniquely valuable, but we all can be such persons. This is one of the many points at which there's a difference between the two largest of the world's quarter million religions, Buddhism and Christianity. Although I admit we could actually be as low as fifth, but uh, Islam will surpass us in numbers if it is not yet. Christianity is still the largest, but we're in that top five for sure. And a big difference between us and the Christians is anybody can be the Buddha, not just anybody can be uh, Jesus, uh, no, not just anyone can be the Christ. Jesus was supposed by Christians, and we mention this because we're also broadcasting this on Easter. He was supposed by Christians to, have a un to be a unique embodiment of ultimate reality. And his birth was supposed to have been intrinsically significant. By contrast, Shakyamuni Buddha's birth, we understand, to have been the birth of a human being who later awoke and became an embodiment of ultimate reality an embodiment of the most profound truth the Buddha is, a person through whom the universe knows and expresses itself, just like, potentially, you and me. You and I and all people are as worthy as Jesus, as the god of the monotheists, according to Buddhist thought. We all have the worthiness of Shakyamuni himself, the potential to awaken deeply to the truth and to share that truth. There are a couple of qualifications. We're not there yet. <laughs> Firstly, of course, not only are you and I and everyone we know as worthy and as much a part of ultimate reality as Jesus or Krishna or anybody could have possibly have been, but that also includes my mean grandfather, John Gibbs. And we all have a mean grandfather. He's just not always named John. Or maybe she's your Aunt Connie. Or Maybe she's not always an aunt. Maybe it could be your cousin May or your brother-in-law Ken, et cetera, et cetera. All of us have families and they all present people who it's hard to accept 
could possibly awaken, but they will. They can and they must. The family dog is also ultimate reality. The mean one. All living things, all living things are equally expressions of the universe. All living things are modes of the universe's self-knowledge and self-expression. The Buddhist vision is ultimately utterly egalitarian and thoroughly democratic, more so than most of us would really want, because the realm of nirvanic oneness is open to everyone. It's open to Vladimir Putkin. It's open to Kevin Spacey and Donald Trump and Joe Biden and Marjorie Taylor Greene. The, the door is just wide open. You don't have to qualify for it. You don't have to qualify for enlightenment. So this vision that we share amongst the Buddhist family is especially broad and inclusive. The Buddha's compassion draws us in. Even when we, every move we make is a move of turning away from the light. The Buddha's compassion continues to pour on us and it will sink, sink in eventually, even if people like me It's true that humans and other biological beings have no other fixed nature or destiny than Buddhahood, than becoming Buddhas. And this includes, again, everyone. <coughs> this includes the homeless people and the disadvantaged. As I pointed out, as I often point out, Shakyamuni was a homeless person. He never became a monk. He never lived in a con consistent period in a monastery. He lived in the forest. He built monasteries for others and visited them and stayed overnight. That was it. So since everyone has this capacity, it's not a reason for an individual excessive pride, yet we are as worthy as any being who's ever lived. We're, we are expressions of this one life. Buddhas are persons who know this identity with all things in a thoroughgoing way and who live accordingly. There's the two differences. I'm, I'm potentially a Buddha too, but Shakyamuni Buddha really knew it and he spent 45 years helping us and teaching. He could have just sat in bliss under the Bodhi tree, but he did not. So those are the two qualifications for us ever being at the same potential as Shakyamuni Buddha or Amida Buddha. We simply have to become thoroughly aware of the truth and then actively embody it. We have to actively and convincingly live that truth. That potential is fulfilled in the Buddhas. Shakyamuni fulfilled his potential. Buddhas, Buddhas realize this potential we share with them, and so it's not just theoretical for them. They are what we hope and wish to and one day will be. And the virtue and the power they were in touch with are quite real. So to simply say that we all have the potential to become Buddhas can be as superficial as saying that we all have potential to become President of the United States. The President of the United States is not only a symbol of the will of the American people, he actually has the authority and the power to do quite a bit. And you know what? I'll never be President. Just because I'm too old. But Shakyamuni wasn't a candidate for Buddhahood, he was a Buddha. Hanumatsuri celebrates his attainment of Buddhahood. Buddhas, again, embody the ultimate or fundamental reality with a presence that affects us. Buddhas embody the ultimate reality effectively and in a way that influences us through teaching and example. They bring us to where they went. Now we, we sometimes see impressive statues and evocative paintings and they can help us to understand the presence which Shakyamuni Buddha had. And as representations, they can still help to influence us positively just by being there, <laughs> the statues and the images. The way in which enlightened men and women can influence us just by being there. I've often pointed out in my experience, people who are deeply spiritual when you're around them, you get more quiet. <laughs> I get less inclined to talk. They have that influence just by being in the room. Uh, Buddhas are not gods, and they started out as ordinary people, just like you and me. Still, they have become persons of special worth, extraordinary power, and influence. Buddhas are exemplars, heroes of a sort, 
spiritual heroes. The most recent of these exemplar hero Buddhists to be born into on planet Earth, so far as we know, was, to our knowledge, Shakyamuni Buddha, about 2,500 years ago, 2,600 years ago, something, something in that range. And as I mentioned, we celebrate Shakyamuni Buddha's birth not just because he was born, but especially because of what he taught. So let me again mention a couple of things we're pretty sure he taught himself, not that the later teachings are less valid, but uh, since the uh, Chinese canon is 100,000 pages long, it seems unlikely that he taught all that himself. He would have had to have talked really fast. He, the Buddha did not teach all of the canon in 45 years, and the most recent page in the canon is as valid as the first page in the canon of Buddhist teachings. But uh, the Buddha's own teachings can be identified to some extent even though we prefer not to distinguish between what Shakyamuni himself taught and what his uh, enlightened students did to elaborate that vision. It is said that on the day he died, there were 499 enlightened monks. So they, their, their vision was just as deep as his. He brought, he brought them to that stage. But allow me to emphasize teachings likely to have been given by Shakyamuni Buddha personally uh, and the, the Dhammapada is one of the sources for this quote, which says, stop doing harm, do good, purify the mind. So I might, instead of purify the mind, might want to put that in a more passive or neutral voice, allow the mind and the heart to settle out and become clear and compose it. Stop doing harm and do good. This is the teaching of all the Buddhas. This is what Shakyamuni said. This is the teaching of all the awoken persons. Stop doing harm, do good, allow the mind to clear and become pure. We must stop doing harm, and we almost always know when we're doing harm. We should do good if we're sure it's good, and it's not crowding someone else, then do that good. Allow the mind and heart and the body to become clear and composed. We Jodo Shinshu Buddhists trust in the vow of universal liberation, Hongan, the 18th of the 48 numbered vows in the larger Sutra Amida Buddha, the promise that anyone who wishes it can be touched by this light and led into this goodness. Jodo Shinshu Buddhists try to live lives of appreciation and gratitude. Thankfulness is a simple path a simple and a direct way of being Buddhist. This is the vision of a school of Buddhism, the Jodo Shinshu school. We don't know numbers, probably about 25 million currently. This school is part of the uh, Pure Land Stream of Mahayana, uh, which is probably about three, geez, I don't know, 30, 300 million probably, 300 million Buddhists probably participate in this teaching. Uh, we focus on it. And it's part of this Buddhist path. And how many paths are there? Well, there got to be about a billion, because that's about how many Buddhists there are, about a billion. And each of us has a slightly different path. And there's about a billion of us so far. You and I are not alone. We will make it to transformative awakening, to reality, to enlightenment. We will make it. We will one day awaken just like Shakyamuni did. We commemorate that day, the awakening of Shakyamuni Buddha. I thank you for listening to me. I thank you for chanting the Jusege along with me, listening to me chant the Shishinrai. We're going to close this uh, recorded service in honor of Hanamatsuri Flower Festival, the day of the Buddha's birth, Shakyamuni Buddha. Thank you for joining me, and if you would, please join me in a posture of respect and peace in Gosho. And if you are a mood, a mood to, please say the Buddha's name with me a few times. We rely upon the source of limitless wisdom and endless life. Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Mirabutsu, Namo Mirabutsu, Namo Nabutsu, Namo Nabutsu, Namo Mirabutsu, Namo Nabutsu, Namo Nabutsu.
Thank you very much.